Okay, so NVIDIA gave me this awesome NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA edition. So this is a GPU with an amazing 48 gigabytes of RAM. So let's see what we can do with it. I'm gonna publish a couple of videos where we're using high RAM situations on these types of video cards. And this is really where these professional workstation GPUs particularly shine. I did a video a while back talking about how to do very high resolution Mandelbrot. And this, this one, I'm gonna use PyTorch to do it. And we're going to do all of that compute natively in the GPU. I have an older one that I did in TensorFlow, but this one where we get the whole pipeline into the GPU and I'm able to render video with it as well. So let's take a look at this. I have it running in this Jupyter lab. This is actually running on the computer behind me, but I'm using my, my kind of studio computer that, that I typically record with in front of the camera. So here you can see some of what I am going to make use of to do this. So first of all, let's just talk about the render. Now, if you're going to actually calculate the values of a Mandelbrot, I'm not gonna talk so much about that. I've got a really quick, YouTube short that I'm linking in the description that shows you exactly how you calculate the Mandelbrot in one minute. So you'll want to take a look at that, but fundamentally the output from a Mandelbrot calculation is a grid of cells, values, that'll make up the picture, and it's counts. So how many times through the, the Mandelbrot equation does the, the value circle the origin before heading out into infinity? And you, you get that count, and then those counts make up the colors of what you see in the Mandelbrot. These are all real numbers, so you can zoom in very, very deep, but your numbers become extremely precise size. And the precision of those numbers becomes almost mind-boggling as you see some of the YouTube videos where they will zoom for like 12 hours. We're going to zoom for just a couple of minutes and go decently deep. But you might need to look at additional things if you wanted to do like multi-hour zooms where you're going into perhaps uh, 10 to the negative hundreds, thousands. I don't even know how, how far they go in terms of some of those depths. So the render, what this is doing is taking that array of counts and spitting out a image. Now the number of counts, I don't just do a gradient from zero to, to the maximum because that produces a very boring looking Mandelbrot plot. You want something more periodic so that as they go to a certain count and then decrease, so, so very sinusoidal, so sine wave works quite quite well. So I use sine and cosine to, that way it stays slightly out of phase in the, in the different directions. And this basically produces what I'm looking for. And you can see that basically I am only cycling over uh, one of the, the actual values here. So you're going to get a very blue looking Mandelbrot. Many of the ones that you see on YouTube get a lot more creative in here with, their, with the coloring. This is the Mandelbrot helper. One important parameter that you have is you have to calculate how many times or how far a point will orbit the, the center before going out into infinity. And that's what this is doing. This is the maximum number of cycles. So as you increase this, I set it to 200 for the examples here, but as you increase that, you get more accurate looking Mandelbrots, more precise, but at a certain point, it, it becomes almost counterproductive. So you, you have to tune that one a bit. I'm relatively happy with what 200 is giving me. Somebody's done Mandelbrot a whole lot more. That, that might be too high, that might be too low. And I have not gone super crazy deep in Mandelbrot. I've used it for since, probably since the 1980s, off and on on various computers. But if, if any comments from somebody who has gone even deeper in this, definitely let me know in the comments. Very curious to hear what others have seen, or if you see any improvements in my CUDA code, absolutely let me know. And this is not even direct CUDA. This is 
this is Pi uh, Torch. We could do this in Direct CUDA, like C99. I've done that kind of thing before. If you're interested in a Direct CUDA example in Python, let me know. That, that could be kind of fun. I haven't done C99 in a while, but this would not be that bad. And then we set up the, the, the complex numbers. We're basically using complex numbers as a plane, like an X and Y component for the real and imaginary parts. If you haven't worked with complex numbers a lot, don't worry about that. It's, it, there, we're, it's just really representing the numbers as a plane. And then the complex number mathematics allows us to perform the relatively simple equation of the Mandelbrot. And again, have a look at my YouTube short if you want a, just a crash course on how these are actually calculated from a mathematical level. So we run that. Now this code allows you to produce a single image. And I've got a link to this code here. You can see it in Colab, but you won't have quite the memory that I am throwing around here. So let's, let's do it just a normal HD. So if I run this, oh, make sure that you run this part first. And it is using CUDA, it's detecting my GPU. This will run under CPU. And if you have a long enough lifespan, that may even work out for you. So there you go. That is the classic, classic Mandelbrot. I can make this higher and higher resolution. So if I run it up here at 16K, that's about all that my 48 gigabyte GPU is going to handle. Now I could pull back these 64-bit precisions since we're not zooming in crazy deep. It, if, if I just wanted to produce a bigger one, I could, I could get out probably to that level. But you can see it's taking a little bit longer here. Virtually all of that pause was Jupiter Lab trying to figure out how to scale this down because this is a big, big image. 15, 15K pixels by 8.6K pixels. That's a big image. And you can see it sitting right here. We're gonna look at it in just a second. But if you try to then go to 32K at this level of precision, yeah, you're, you're gonna have some problems. And out of memory, even on a 42 gigabyte, by GPU, you can get the out of memory. So let's open it up here. You can see Windows Image Viewer is taking a little bit of time to figure out what to do with this gigantic image. And here it is. I don't need click chimp or whatever Microsoft wants. So anyway, you can zoom in on this deeper and deeper and deeper. And you can see up here, it said about 52%. So this is, a, this is a big old image. This is nothing compared to what we're about to do. But you can zoom in further and further. And now it starts to pixelate because we're at, we've gone as deep as we really can for that one rendering. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to increase that rendering, the, the zoom factor and keep going in there deeper and deeper and we'll render it to a image or to a video just for fun. So what you need to do is not just zoom in to this point that I have, which is close to the origin. You need to find a location that is pretty interesting. If you just zoom into the abyss, that is the black region or solid colored region, you're not gonna see much. So here you can see I've written some code where I can say the zoom amount and I zoom all the way to 3000. So I can look at it and see basically what these values, and I found this, this pair, this location to be pretty good because I can keep zooming in and we're not really heading to the abyss. But if you started to zoom into this area, say here, you would go into the abyss and you, you, you would not see anything interesting. Because believe me, there are not other Mandelbrots out hidden in the black regions. I think that's true. Please anybody correct me if that's not true, but I do believe once you're, once you're off the grid, so to speak, you're not gonna see anything else. I don't think there's islands of Mandelbrot off in the abyss. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and this little bit of code here is just necessary to make the current version of Colab actually work. And we create a temp directory that's going to store all of these files. And then we're gonna run this part. And what this does is it starts to 
render all of these 3000 frames and it just creates lots and lots of images and you can see it basically running here. Uh, this does take a couple of hours to completely render this and then I use FFmpeg to put it all together and you could use Google Colab to download it if you had it here. So let's have a look at what the final result of this actually looks like. And again, if anybody has recommendations to make this go even, even faster in PyTorch, definitely let me know. Um, I am all, all ears there. So if I run this, you can see the zoom and it doesn't pixelate. There is some quirkiness going on at the boundaries of some of these, and that's probably, I'm guessing, IEEE rounding. Certainly, if you, I bet, I know some of the very smooth ones on YouTube have ways of dealing with this, but I found a point that I can really zoom in pretty deeply and you can see the additional detail. So I'm just going to let this run. Uh, thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in seeing more on this subject or related subjects with a lot with what you do with GPUs with a lot of memory, I definitely want to get some stable diffusion going on here pretty soon. Let me know in the comments, what would you like to see done with this very, very powerful GPU that NVIDIA was kind enough to send my way, the RTX 6000 ADA edition. Please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like if it was useful to you. Wow, you stuck away around all the way to the end. I feel like I should do some Marvel end credits type things. Well, thank you for sticking around. Click the subscribe button. And here's a cute picture of a bulldog. <laughs>